It's a delight to be with you today. Thank you for the invitation to contribute to this important conference. Uh, why has Israel been the subject of more United Nations resolutions than any other country in the world? And why has the United States vetoed virtually every single one of them? 60% of UN resolutions have been critical of Israel or its interests. Um, why is there such a close relationship between the United States and Israel? Why so much of a fascination with Israel among uh, evangelical Christians in particular? It's important to understand that the, um, that, uh, the Christian Zionist lobby is ten times larger than the Jewish Zionist lobby. Surveys in America, the Pew Research Forum, says that uh, one in four American Christians regard it as their biblical responsibility to support Israel. And among evangelical Christians, that uh, rises to over 60%. Christian Zionism is uh, a, a movement that goes back at least uh, 200 years, but it has uh, become very influential in our generation as a result of the founding of the State of Israel and the 1967 war, which was seen as, in some sense, the fulfillment of Bible prophecy, the Bible coming true. And uh, in 1976, we had the election of a born-again evangelical president, Jimmy Carter. 1977, the election of Menachem Begin as the Israeli prime minister, and a marriage uh, uh, developed between the evangelical right and the Israeli right. And it's brokered by Jerry Falwell, who for 50 years becomes the leading advocate for Israel in the United States. He could boast of having access to 100 million American Christians on a weekly basis. And when, uh, when Jerry Falwell died, he, the uh, mantle was taken up by John Hagee. John Hagee is the leader of the Christians United for Israel and he reflects uh, the broad coalition of Christian organizations in America and uh, in Europe that see their mandate or responsibility to defend or to support or advocate for uh, Zionism in uh, America today. I'll just give you a couple of examples of uh, statements by John Hagee. He said, the sleeping giant of Christian Zionism has awakened. There are 50 million Christians standing up and applauding Israel. Uh, in uh, 2007, at the founding of Kufi, in the presence of US senators, and after a, a recorded message from the US president, uh, John Hagee said this, it is 1938, Iran is Germany, Ahmadinejad is the new Hitler, we must stop Iran's nuclear threat and stand boldly with Israel, the early democracy in the Middle East. Think of our potential future together, 50 million evangelicals joining in common cause with 5 million Jewish people in America, it is a match made in heaven. The political agenda of Christian Zionism is sixfold. The first element of their theology that has a political, uh, 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 a political consequence is because they believe the Jews are the chosen people, uh, they feel it is their biblical and uh, moral responsibility to defend Israel, to lobby for Israel in Congress and the Senate and the White House. And they do that very effectively. Alongside APAC, you have numerous Christian organizations that lobby every single U.S. politician. It's the reason you won't find uh, a single U.S. congressman critical of Israel in office, because it's political suicide. Uh, Bridges for Peace, Christians United for Israel, the International Christian Embassy, Christian Friends of Israel. There are over 200 Christian Zionist organizations in America today. So the first element of their, their politi political agenda is to support Israel uh, in, uh, in Washington. Secondly, because they believe that God gave the land of Israel to the Jewish people exclusively, you find Christian organizations campaigning for the settlement program to be expanded. Uh, and so you have uh, Christians, uh, the Christian Friends of Israeli Communities will link churches with settlements, funding the settlements, campaigning for the settlements, 
uh, supporting the settlement program. The third element of their uh, strategy is the belief that Jerusalem is their eternal capital. So what is their agenda there? Well, how do you get the world to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel? It's very easy. You move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And if the Americans move their embassy, everyone else has to do the same. And de facto, Jerusalem becomes the capital of Israel. And so Christian organizations campaigning to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The funding has been allocated. The, uh, the building has been identified. And the legislation has been approved on three occasions. But successive U.S. presidents have refused to sign off on the legislation. So it's a matter of when, not whether. The fourth element of their theology is very controversial, and that is that they believe the temple, the Jewish temple, must be rebuilt before the Messiah comes. The problem is the Haram al-Sharif, the Dome of the Rock, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the mosque, is in the, in the way of where the Jewish temple must be rebuilt. And so you find Christian organizations campaigning to destroy the Dome of the Rock, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, in order to rebuild the Jewish temple. And members of the far right uh, Israeli organizations committed to doing that, Gershon Salomon, the Temple Mount Faithful, they are guests of honor in many churches uh, in the United States. He said this recently, he said, we must have a war uh, we must bring the Messiah by fighting. Uh, we must uh, bring the Messiah by fighting on his behalf. Uh, we must have a war, he says. And that leads me to their final element, which is that their theology is very apocalyptic. It is confrontational. Uh, it is uh, deeply skeptical of the peace process. And it is uh, a polarized view of the world, a very pessimistic, apoc apocalyptic view of the world. Deeply destructive, and that is, I'm suggesting to you, one of the primary reasons why uh, U.S. politicians, European politicians, are so aligned to Israel against the interests of Iran, uh, the Palestinians, and the wider Middle East. In 2006, I helped to write a statement that was endorsed and signed by the heads of the churches in Jerusalem, repudiating Christian Zionism unequivocally, unconditionally, as heretical as a, a, a repudiation of Christian theology. This was part of the statement which the heads of the churches in Jerusalem uh, signed. We reject the contemporary alliance of Christian Zionism and organizations uh, with the Israeli government that presently impose their unilateral preemptive borders and domination over Palestine. We reject the Christian Zionism that facilitates these policies that advances racial exclusivity and perpetual war rather than the gospel of universal love, redemption, and peace. We condemn, they condemn the world to the doom of Armageddon. We call upon everyone to liberate themselves from ideologies of militarism and occupation, but to pursue the healing of the nations. So I want to emphasize, and I do this in my books, Christian Zionism, which is available in Arabic, and uh, Zion's Christian Soldiers, which is available in Arabic and a number of other languages, and uh, two films which I recommend with God on our side, and uh, a number of uh, videos which I've made on Christian Zionism, which are available today, to emphasize to our Muslim and Christian brothers in the Middle East and Jewish friends that Christian Zionism is a heresy, that it is a, a travesty and a distortion of the Christian message. It is true that Christians are called to jihad. There is a biblical, um, a biblical emphasis on jihad in the teaching of Jesus. A holy war, a struggle, but it is not against other peoples. It is an internal struggle. It is a spiritual struggle against evil that runs through the heart of each one of us, not through nations, not through religions. So it's important to emphasize that jihad in a Christian sense is a spiritual war, that our enemy is Satan, our enemy are the demonic forces in the heavenly realms, not nation states, not political systems, and certainly not other religions. 
The Apostle Paul says in the letter to the Ephesians, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the dark, uh, the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil. So we must resist the temptation to think that another race, another religion are our enemy. We're all created in the image and likeness of God. And Jesus calls his followers at least to be peacemakers, to love our enemies, to, um, to resist evil non-violently. He calls us to repudiate the use of violence to justify uh, our calling to follow him. So in a Christian sense, jihad is a radical uh, strategy, but it is not about conquest or about conflict. It is about compassion, mercy, mediation, and peacemaking. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Let us pursue the path of peace so that we too can earn the right to be called children of God. Thank you and God bless you.